symbolism. P. Motion in the centers. 1. The nature of the centers. 2. The centers in the rays. 3. The centers in Kundalini. 4. The centers in the senses. 5. The centers in initiation. I. Preliminary remarks. I would point out primarily and emphasize the fact that the motion we are considering is that due to the fire latent in matter itself, a motion that is the prime characteristic and basic quality of the primordial ray of active intelligence. To express it otherwise, it is the outstanding faculty of the third logos of Brahma. 141 142, on Cosmic Fire. Need is the creator, and this faculty is the product or result of an earlier manifestation. Each of the three Lagoi, when in manifestation and thus personified, is exemplifying some one quality which predominates over the other. Each, more or less, exemplifies all, but each demonstrates one of the three aspects so profoundly as to be recognized as that aspect itself. In much the same way, for instance, the different incarnating Jesus carry a vibration which is their main measure, though they may also have lesser vibrations that are subsidiary to them. Let us get this clear, for the truth embodied is fundamental. 1. The threefold goal. 2. The threefold function. 3. The threefold mode of activity. The third logos. The third logos, or Brahma, is characterized by active intelligence. His mode of action is that which we call rotary, or that measured revolution of the matter of the system, first as a grand totality, setting in movement the material circumscribed by the entire ring pass knot, and secondly differentiating it, according to seven vibratory rates or measures into the seven planes. On each of these planes the process is pursued, and the matter of any plane within the plane ring pass not shows first as a totality and then as a sevenfold differentiation. This differentiation of matter is brought about by rotary motion, and is controlled by the law of economy, one of the cosmic laws with which we will deal later, only pausing here to say that this law of economy might be considered as the controlling factor in the life of the third logos. Therefore, A. His goal is the perfect blending of spirit and matter. B. His function is the manipulation of Prakriti, or matter, so as to make it fit, or equal to, the demands and needs of the spirit. C. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N 143 His mode of action is rotary, or, by the revolution of matter, to increase activity and thereby make the material more pliable. All these three concepts are governed by the law of economy, which is the law of adaptation in time and space, or the line of least resistance. This line of least resistance is that which is sought for and followed on the matter side of existence. Incidentally, Brahma manifests will, because he is purpose, and love because in this solar system love is the line of least resistance. While this is an occult statement worthy of consideration, yet it must be remembered that he is primarily activity and intelligence with the aim of adaptability, and that this is his main characteristic. The second logos. The second logos, Vishnu, the divine wisdom ray, the great principle of buddy seeking to blend with the principle of intelligence, is characterized by love. 
His motion is that which we might term spiral cyclic. Availing himself of the rotary motion of all atoms, he adds to that his own form of motion or of spiraling periodical movement, and by circulation along an orbit or spheroidal path, which circles around a central focal point in an ever-ascending spiral, two results are brought about. A. B. He gathers the atoms into forms. By means of these forms he gains the needed contact, and develops full consciousness on the five planes of human development, gradually rarefying and refining the forms as the spirit of love or the flame divine spirals ever onward towards its goal, that goal which is also the source from which it came. Consciousness, 
to be achieved in cooperation with the third logos, P. His function is the building of forms to be his instruments of experience. C. His mode of action is cyclic and spiral, the revolution of the wheel of existence in ordered cycles for a specific purpose, and the progression of these spheres of matter around a fixed center within the solar periphery. These three concepts are governed by the law of attraction, or the law governing the interplay of the action and reaction. A. B. C. Between the sun and its six brothers. Between the circling whirling seven planes of the solar se between between every between everything in the matter of all forms, the spheres of matter themselves and the aggregate of those spheres that are embodied in the forms of still others. The first logos. The first logos is the ray of cosmic will. His mode of action is a literal driving forward of the solar ring path not through space, and until the end of this Mahamantantara or day of Brahma the Logoic. 146. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on cosmic fire. Cycle we shall not be able to conceive of the first aspect of our power as it really is. We know it now is the will to exist, manifesting through the matter of the forms, the primordial ray and the divine ray, and we know it as that which in some occult manner links the system up with its cosmic center. In a manner inconceivable to as the first logos brings in the influence of other constellations. When this first aspect is better understood, in the next Mahamanvantara, the work of the seven Rishis of the Great Bear, 65 and the supreme influence of Sirius will be comprehended. In this present manifestation of the Sun, or of the Vishnu aspect, we are concerned more closely with the Pleiades and their influence via the Sun, and, in relation to our planet, via Venus. This subject is the first logo, manifesting only in connection with the other two in the system, is a profound mystery, which is not fully understood by even those who have taken the sixth initiation. The first logo is embodied in the first and it is through this instrumentality that the monosophy of came into a in relation to the human and human hierarchy. In this system, the blending of the divine ray of wisdom and the primordial ray of intelligent matter forms the great soul evolution. As said, B, the sevenfold ray of wisdom, the dragon in its seven forms. Six, 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 seven, six, eight. This is a 65 inches. The Hindus place their seven primitive rishis in the great bear. The prototypes are the animating source of the seven heavenly men. The planetary logoi are considered the seven existences who function through the seven stars of the bear. S. D. 2. 668. 66 S. D. I. 100 to 108. 67 Suba Rao says in five years of theosophy, page 102, as a gen. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N 147 
deep mystery, and only a clue to it all can be found at this time by man in the contemplation of his own nature in the three worlds of his manifestation. Just as our Logos is seeking objectivity through his solar system in its threefold form of which the present is the second, so man seeks objectivity through his three bodies physical, astral and mental. At this time he is polarized in his astral body, or in his second aspect in like manner as the indifferentiated Logos is polarized in his second aspect. In time and space as we now conceive it, the sum total of jivas are governed by feeling, emotion, and desire, and not by the will, yet at the same time the will aspect governs manifestation, for the ego who is the source of personality shows in manifestation the will to love. The difficulty lies in the inability of the finite mind to grasp the significance of this threefold manifestation, but by thoughtful brooding over the personality and its relation to the ego, who is the love aspect and who nevertheless in relation to manifestation in the three worlds as the will aspect likewise, will come some faint light upon the same problems raised to deity, or expanded from microcosmic to macrocosmic spheres. The Mahadeva aspect or the first Logos, who embodies cosmic will, is controlled by the law of synthesis, the cosmic law governing the tendency to unification, only in this case, it is not the unification of matter and spirit, but the unification of the seven into the three, and into the one. These three figures primarily stand for spirit. Errol rule, whenever seven entities are mentioned in the ancient occult science of India in any connection whatsoever, you must suppose that those seven entities came into existence from three primary entities, and that these three entities, again, are evolved out of a single entity or monad. To take a familiar example, the seven colored rays in the solar ray are evolved out of three primary colored rays and the three primary colors coexist with the four secondary colors in the solar ray. Similarly the three primary entities which brought man into existence coexist in him with the four secondary entities which arose from different combinations of the three primary entities. Read also S. P. I. 190, 191. 68 CS. D. I. 100, 108. Also stands a 3, 7A. 148. A T R E A T I S E on Cosmic Fire. For quality, for principle, and not so primarily for matter, although matter, being inspired by spirit, conforms. The Lalaf synthesis has a direct connection with one who is still higher than our logos, and is the law of control exercised by him upon the logos of our system. This is a spiritual relationship that tends to abstraction or to that synthesis of the spiritual elements that will result in their conscious return, the whole point lying in that word, conscious, to their cosmic point of synthesis, or of unification with their source. Their source is the 1-A-B-O-U-T-W-H-O-M-N-A-U-T-H-T-M-A-Y-B-E-S-A-I-D, -E as we have earlier seen. Therefore, in connection with the first logo, we can sum up as we did with the other Logoi. A. His goal is the synthesis of the spirits who are gaining consciousness through manifestation, and who, by means of experience in matter, are gaining in quality. B. His function is, 
by means of will, to hold them in manifestation for the desired period, and later to abstract them, and blend them again with their spiritual source. Hence the necessity of remembering that fundamentally, the first Logos controls the cosmic entities or extra-systemic beings, the second Logos controls the solar entities, the third Logos controls the lunar entities and their correspondences elsewhere in the system. This rule must not be carried too far in detail as long as man's mind is of its present caliber. The mystery lies in the realization that all is carried on in a divine cooperation that has its base outside the system. Hence to the fact that the first Logos is called the Destroyer, because he is abstraction, if viewed from below upwards. His work is the synthesis of spirit with spirit, there. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-149 Eventual abstraction from matter, and their unification with their cosmic source. Hence also he is the one who brings about pralaya or the disintegration of form, the form from which the spirit has been abstracted. If we carry the analogy down to the microcosm a glimpse can be gained of the same idea and hence ability to comprehend with greater facility. The ego being to the man on the physical plane what the logos is to his system, is likewise the animating will, the destroyer of forms, the producer of pralaya and the one who withdraws the inner spiritual man from out of his threefold body, he draws them to himself the center of his little system. The ego is extra cosmic as far as the human being on the physical plane is concerned, and in the realization of this fact may come elucidation of the true cosmic problem involving the logos and the spirits in prison, as the Christian puts it. C. His mode of action is a driving forward. The will that lies back of evolutionary development is his, and he it is who drives spirit onward through matter till it eventually emerges from matter, having achieved two things. First, added quality to quality, and therefore emerging plus the gained faculty that experience has engendered. Second, increase the vibration of matter itself by means of its own energy, so that matter at the moment of pralaya and obscuration will have two main characteristics, activity, the result of the law of economy, and a dual magnetism which will be the result of the law of attraction. All of these three concepts are governed by the law of synthesis, which is the law of a coherent will too. B. Er. 150. A T R E A T I S E on cosmic fire. Existing not only in time and space, but within a still vaster cycle. These preliminary statements have been made. In terms of fire another angle of expression may perhaps elucidate. The third logos is fire in matter. He burns by friction, and gains speed and added vibration by the rotation of the spheres, their interplay thus producing friction with each other. The second logos is solar fire. He is the fire of matter and the electric fire of spirit blended, 
producing, in time and space, that fire which we call solar. He is the quality of the flame, or the essential flame, produced by this merging. A correspondence to this may be seen in the radiatory fire of matter, and in the emanation, for instance, from the central sun, from a planet, or from a human being, which latter emanation we call magnetism. Amon's emanation, our characteristic vibration, is the result of the blending of spirit and matter, and the relative adequacy of the matter, or the form, to the life within. The objective solar system, or the sun in manifestation, is the result of the blending of spirit electric fire with matter fire by friction, and the emanations of the sun, in time and space, are dependent upon the adequacy of the matter, and of the form to the life within. The first logos is electric fire, the fire of pure spirit. Yet in manifestation he is the sun, for by union with matter, the mother, the sun is produced by whom he is. Physical and astral motion 151. Known. I and my father are one. 69 is the most occult statement in the Christian Bible, for it not only refers to the union of a man with his source, the monad, via the ego, but to the union of all life with its source, the will aspect, the first logos. We will now endeavor to confine ourselves strictly to the subject of fire and matter, and its active effect upon the sheaths of which it is the animating factor, and upon the centers which come primarily under its control. As we have been told, and as is generally recognized, the effect of heat in matter is to produce that activity which we call rotary, or the revolution of the spheres. Some of the ancient books, and among them a few that are not yet accessible in the Occident, have taught that the entire vault of heaven is a vast sphere, revolving slowly like a stupendous wheel, and carrying with it, in its revolution, the entire number of constellations and of universes contained within it. This is a statement unverifiable by the finite mind of man at his present stage, and with his present scientific accessories, but like all occult statements, it contains within it the seed of thought, the germ of truths, and the clue to the mystery of the universe. Suffice it here to say, that the rotation of the spheres within the solar periphery is a recognized occult fact, and indications are available to prove that science itself likewise formulates the hypothesis that the solar ring pass not similarly rotates in its appointed place among the constellations. But at this juncture we will not deal with this angle of the subject, but will study the rotary action of the spheres of the system, and of its content all the lesser spheres of every degree remembering ever to keep the distinction clearly in mind that we are dealing now simply with the inherent characteristic of matter itself, and not with matter in cooperation with 69 Bible, John, 1030, 152, A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on Cosmic Fire, its opposite, spirit, which cooperation brings about spiral cyclic movement. 2. The effects of rotary motion. Every sphere in the body macrocosmic rotates. This rotation produces certain effects, which effects might be enumerated as follows. 1. Separation is produced by rotary movement. By means of this action, all the spheres became differentiated, and form, as we know, the following atomic units. A. 
The solar system, recognized as a cosmic atom, all the so-called atoms within its periphery being regarded as molecular. B. C. The seven planes, regarded as seven vast spheres, rotating latitudinally within the solar periphery. The seven rays, regarded as the seven veiling forms of the spirits, themselves spheroidal bands of color, rotating